morning. Welcome to uh, worship this morning on Wednesday, July 22nd, the Feast of St. Mary Magdalene. Our service begins on page one of your bulletin. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son restored Mary Magdalene to health of body and of mind, and called her to be a witness of his resurrection. Mercifully grant that by your grace we may be healed from all our infirmities, and know you in the power of his unending life, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and blessed. First lesson this morning comes from uh, the book of Judith. Judith prostrated herself, put ashes on her head, and uncovered the sackcloth she was wearing. At the very time when the evening incense was being offered in the house of God in Jerusalem, Judith cried out to the Lord with a loud voice and said, O oh Lord God, your strength does not depend on numbers, nor your might on the powerful. But you are the God of the lowly, helper of the oppressed, upholder of the weak, protector of the forsaken, savior of those without hope. Please, please, God of my Father, God of the heritage of Israel, Lord of heaven and earth, creator of the waters, king of all your creation, hear my prayer. Make my deceitful words bring wound and bruise on those who have planned cruel things against your covenant and against your sacred house and against Mount Zion and against the house your children possess. Let your whole nation and every tribe know and understand that you are God, the God of all power and might, and that there is no other who protects the people of Israel but you alone. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us read a portion of Psalm 42, responsibly by half verse. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so my soul for you, O oh God. My soul is a thirst for God, a thirst for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where now is your God? I pour out my soul when I think on these things, how I went with the multitude and led them into the house of God, with a voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who keep holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him, who is the help of my countenance 
and my God. A reading from the second book of Corinthians, second letter to the Corinthians. The love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died, and he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher, Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them all that he told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So today is the day where the church honors St. Mary Magdalene. And Mary of Magdala near Capernaum was one of several women who followed Jesus and ministered to him in Galilee. The gospel according to Luke records that Jesus went on through cities and villages preaching and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God and the twelve were with him and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. And that comes from the eighth chapter of Luke. The gospel tells us that Mary was healed by Jesus, followed him, and was one of those who stood near his cross at Calvary. It's clear that Mary Magdalene's life was radically changed by Jesus' healing. Her ministry of service and steadfast companionship, even as a witness to the crucifixion, has, through the centuries, been an example of the faithful ministry of women to Christ. All four Gospels name Mary as one of the women who went to the tomb to mourn and to care for Jesus' body. Her weeping for the loss of her Lord strikes a common chord with the grief of all others over the death of loved ones. Jesus' tender response to her grief, meeting her in the garden, revealing himself to her by calling her name, makes her the very first witness to the risen Lord. She is given the command, Go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God, which we just read in our Gospel reading. As the first messenger of the resurrection, she tells the disciples, I have seen the Lord. In the tradition of the Eastern Church, Mary is regarded as the equal of an apostle, and she is held in veneration as the patron saint of the great cluster of monasteries on Mount Athos. And so today, the Church honors St. Mary Magdalene.
Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Please kneel as you are able for the prayers of the people. <clears throat> Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Eugene and Robert, our bishops, and Victor, our priest, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Donald, our president, Lawrence, our governor, and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, let light perpetual shine upon them. May we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. And I invite those who are watching at home to leave prayer requests in the comment section below. For our parish members and friends who are ill, infirm, or in need, including Tony, Leo, Rob, Ben, Eleanor, Samuel, Matthew, Phil, Joan, Eloise, Pete, Mary and Scott, Kate, Loretta, Leonard, May, Alexandra, Jenny, Rick, Ann, Kelly, Kelsey, Boyd, Mel, Pat, Fran, Mark, Alan, Jordan, Noah, Matthew, for this parish family. For those who have been deployed and put in harm's way to defend our country. We pray for those who work for the safety of our communities and the security of our country. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we remember those in the Fellowship of the Faith, Grace Memorial Church Darlington, Holy Cross Church The Rocks, Church of the Holy Trinity, Churchville. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, 
We pray for our companion diocese of Puerto Rico and the team responsible for, for preparing the Lambeth Conference, which was due to be taking place now. Please pray for them as they consider the implications of its postponement in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we pray for Vince and Suze. O oh God of compassion, giver of life and health, we pray your healing mercies upon all who are in any way affected by the outbreak of the COVID-19 coronavirus. Comfort and sustain those who have been stricken. Relieve their pain and restore to them your gifts of gladness and strength. Grant you all in authority the courage to make wise decisions that are essential for the common good and strengthen them to lead institutions that care for those whom they serve. Protect those who are compelled to work farms and fields, city streets and factories that put them in danger with very little pay. Watch over all first responders and those in the medical professions whose duty it is to care for the sick. Guard them all, Lord Christ, from all danger and keep them safe in the knowledge that it is through their sacrifice and service that the health of the whole community is promoted. Mercifully accept these our prayers, O God of all comfort, and our only help in time of need. Amen. Jesus, you are our way, our truth, and our life. Guide us in our journey through the coming week that we may know God's desire for us and gain strength and courage to live as beloved children of God. As the gift of each new day unfolds, open our hearts and minds to you, that we may see you clearly and follow where you lead. To you, risen Savior, we offer our praise, now and always. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be always with you, and also with you. God's peace to you, ladies, and God's peace to those of you who are watching uh, on our Facebook page. Our service continues with Holy Eucharist, uh, Eucharistic Prayer A, which is found on page 8 in your bulletin. And for those who are watching at home, there is a bulletin in the description if you'd like to follow along there as well.
Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with a great crowd of witnesses that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us. And together with them, receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. The night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of men. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. 
Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Prayer for spiritual, excuse me, a prayer for spiritual communion for those who are watching at home and cannot be with us this day. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And let us say our post-communion prayer together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. God's blessings be with you. Christ's peace be with you. The Spirit's outpouring be with you now and always. Amen. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia.